terms of asking how many forms we have mm. right uh, very cl- uh, conveniently classical we had a government body that decided 1 2 3 4 5 6 is your classical dance right a countable number of classical dances for folk the count is not at all we are not able to get the count every state for example my own state karnataka uh, documented folk arts that is uh, music dance theater puppetry all these four together performing arts together crosses 190 after jharkhand and uttarakhand split before they used to have an upper hand we are the highest in the country so that is uh, something that not many people know and if if as a kannada guy you would know that i would full i would feel so proud, proud about it, it right yeah, yeah. that uh, highest number of folk forms mm. is here but if you go to any northern northern india and say tell me a folk dance from karnataka not know. even an, w- one name yeah, yeah. one name like even see punjabi bangda yeah. everybody will be able to say correct yeah. it's become so popular yes why not a form from karnataka we are yet to get that awareness yes so i felt this need for research also for that only sneha kapanna is an acclaimed choreographer bharatnatyam practitioner actor storyteller folk dance exponent and researcher sneha is known for pioneering work in karnataka's folk dance as she was one of the first women to learn folk dances reserved only for men she is credited as a revivalist for researching documenting and performing several dying folk dances of karnataka tune in to this rooted podcast brought to you exclusively by prana stories namaskara sneha namaste we go back a long way um, where we were uh, you know dance class mates bharatnatyam dance class mates under guru b banumati yes we have performed so much so many so many groups so many group <laughs> performances together we used to attend classes do rehearsals and you know go for different performances those were the days absolutely yeah um so um so sneha kapanna i knew as a dance class mate then now after um after a long time i, I get to hear sneha kapanna is a researcher Uh, spe- uh, specifically into folk dance <clears throat> researcher and you have grown into this uh, exponent of folk dance yes. right many people have told me that so i thought why not speak to you on that specifically on folk dances folk dances of india folk dances of karnataka so uh, your specific area is folk dances of karnataka karnataka right? i have been working exclusively on folk arts in uh, karnataka karnataka okay so <clears throat> why don't we just um straight away jump into the topic from where did you sort of get this because you are a, you were learning bharatnatyam um so where did you pick this up or was it always there was it hidden when we knew each other or where did that actually exponentially sort of grow yeah um dance has been the over powering influence in my life it has been there throughout and my entire journey So folk dance was something that was happening along with my Bharatanatyam training because my father was involved in it completely. I was exposed to it from a very young age. But at that time I was just uh, you know casually learning it and picking up and you know working with artists not realizing the depth and uh, purpose of it. Uh, much later where much later only I got into the research aspect of it and into the documentation work and training aspect of it. and i have not stopped bharatanatyam many people forget that and think i'm working exclusively on folk i still continue to go to my classes with uh, shila ma'am and work at uh, uh, bhanumati nitya kala mandiram i run my own classes in jp nagar but uh, the power of uh, folk has been very um, influential in uh, training the way i think in looking at uh, a different perspective of looking at the world and understanding it everything changed once i got into folk research okay so <clears throat> you said um, your father uh, was working in that kind of an area right yeah do you want to talk a little bit about your uh, sure. father Kap- yeah. uh, kapanna srinivas kapanna right uh, yeah uh, shrinivas ji kapanna he has been song and drama uh, officer so basically they had to get artists from all across karnataka and present them for various aspects and functions for government issues uh with him i got to meet all these people so he used to take them for republic day parade hmm. get so many artists to perform at national games rajyotsava 
so i was just this person just hanging around you know mm. so it was a very organic way of imbibing it not realizing what i was witnessing and what it was as i was watching them i seem to have learned and gathered a lot and of course the way you look at them has been completely molded by my father because from day one he has always put the stress on value to things so the way in a general atmosphere if we see we look at folk dancers as yaro uh, bartidre just make them stand in the entrance you know and you can go we don't consider them in the same um level as classical artist we don't put him on the same platform like you know you would have the classical artist performing inside and just have these artists to welcome vips in the entrance so this value of things uh, i began to notice because of my father he used to always say there is no difference they are also artists they have also been working their entire life for one particular form and once i started really spending time with them it became more apparent to me Mm-hmm. So, for the audience to let you know, uh, Srinivas Ji Kapanna, Sangeet Natak Academy Award winner yeah. for in the field of stage design, yeah. right, and yeah. allied arts in, in in stage design. Yeah, and he was also the director of Karnataka Sangeet. Uh, no, he was uh, chairman, chairman, chairman of, of Karnataka Natak Academy. Karnataka Natak. Basically, he was uh, what we would call as a um, organizer or person who promoted. art yeah so in karnataka if you look at any kind like whether it is classical dance theater music uh, somehow he would have some role to play in promoting yeah. some artist or organizing a festival he has been that person who has completely dedicated himself to this field yeah, yeah. i i mean i know i mean we were kids then but i know uh, kapanna sir as the well known person in theater at that time correct he was the only i mean <clears throat> he he had such a big influence on the theater scene uh, you know on those times i i don't know about now but at least then yeah it was it was like that and he was he was like a, a powerhouse he still is yeah. and to this day he continues yeah. to work at the same pace okay. we are all requesting him to slow down slow but down. it doesn't happen <laughs> oh nice okay <laughs> so okay uh, let me come back to the folk traditions traditions specifically yeah. folk dance yeah now folk dance itself is a very vast subject if if you take the world over itself right um and i saw some of your clips that you were speaking uh folk dance over the world itself is such a big topic and when it comes to india again it becomes uh, there are so many variations to it so let's maybe let's keep our f- start from the whole of a little bit of india a little true, true. and then uh, come to true. karnataka sure right um, or I, i i don't know how do you want to no if if you look at uh, folk dances in the world hmm. why we stand a little special or a little elevated is because our history is a little far too in depth compared to other uh, countries and places see when we look at american history we have it happening in a written history it is hardly going back 400 500 years and it stopped i mean uh, the indigenous people we don't have much records of but these indigenous people also when compared to indian indigenous people we seem to be way far ahead the oriental uh, as we call it the uh, india china japan all these countries um the um, amount of evidence that we have acquired and in terms of what has progressed over so many years the length and breadth of it is too vast too vast so when we say something as folk it's a very big umbrella term it can mean so many things it can be traditional dance it can be ritualistic dance it can be tribal dance so folk is just a very generic term right hmm. so it can mean all these things and maybe not all of it at once also okay folk when we say hmm. it could means any of these things like traditional hmm. ritualistic hmm. tribal all these come under folk. folk okay yeah so okay so even tribal is considered to be yes, folk yeah definitely. i had that question that yeah. do you consider tribal different or folk different yeah. so folk is a bigger umbrella umbrella term and yeah it comes uh, tribal ritualistic and uh, what else uh traditional traditional yeah um this is the general 
umbrella term even across the world across the world yeah. across the world okay so now i had a question i have been reading a couple of books on indian indian scriptures traditions and all that right so i mean the the base of whatever we have been reading everything is attributed to the vedas hmm that is like classical scriptures that is there and again you used um uh, the language used is sanskrit right now i'm i don't know i'm i'm just asking the question sure, sure. because i don't know about i i'm trying to seek knowledge here now people say that it is a dev bhasha it it just came from the gods and then you know it just uh, yeah. the rishis got it and then they started chanting it and then finally after a after many years somebody like a vedas compiled it and then it became a script and then you know it started flowing now i always wondered um there used to be people at that at that point in time this these are rishis who actually got those downloads of those mm-hmm. dev bhasha and then they started <clears throat> doing this and it's a very higher spiritual realm that they were you know talking about now there could be this normal people who are living at that time right so my my assumption is they were definitely probably following some traditions at least those are those can be called as folk right now let me um, um put it in a simpler term okay. so that a layman okay. who has yeah. no clue sure. can uh, understand it yeah so when i say um folk dance as an umbrella term hmm. we are talking about a time even before language came correct hmm. so the question of vedas is much later, later. so we have a uh, written grammar text all this happening which is much much later hmm. so this is a time when there was not even a language available right right so when we talk about milio, uh, like uh, neolithic hmm. uh, mesolithic hmm. and all these when the cavemen used to draw yes. and all that so from then there is evidence of dance mm. so i have also traveled along and trying to get these informations in india mm. because i wanted to look at it as a um, scholarly approach to it mm. right so i have been to some places in karnataka also it is uh, available and in madhya pradesh there's a place called bimbetka mm. rock structures mm. so even in that one space there are cave drawings of different period it's not all of the same period mm. but in the oldest of the paintings there is evidence of dance so which is very exciting so there was a time when language was still not available there was no nothing called a civilization so there was still no homes uh, because it plays a big um, role the shift of coming to homes you know having a home mm. having a society having mm. a culture meaning uh, from nomadic to settled kind of correct place. so this was still in the nomadic, nomadic phase place. when they are in the cave dwelling right yeah. so there's evidence of an instrument and there's an evidence of a dance, dance. so it has been uh, painted on these caves uh, mm-hmm. of course the later paintings much elaborate you know with uh, fanfare and lot of properties and all that but the basic dance elements can be found even to this day of course and then we have our uh, um, indus valley and mohenjodaro there also we have samples of these um, bronze bronze structures and the, all these things depicting dances so this is all mohenjodaro is much later so mm-hmm. from cave they had come to civilization and what an advanced civilization that had like you know everything from your sewer ways to everything yeah, right yeah. they it was a very sorted uh, civilization so dance has been there since then mm. so when i talk about um, anything that is veda and after the vedic period you have already had a l- huge uh, length journey mm. of uh, uh, man yeah man woman let's just call it in one term but human species human yeah. race till that point by then where we already have a developed system of music and dance music and dance so that itself is folk so uh, if i have understood it i basically when i had studied visual arts the paintings uh, were the first thing that we st- sort of study in our history uh cave paintings yeah. so cave paintings basically depicted uh hunt right uh, you know uh, people go on hunt and they kill animals and they get it and you know all those things are you know represented in a very 2d flat Correct. kind of an representation and on the on the uh, the caves now i i presume that 
even the dance why they did why they danced i mean the reason why somebody dances or why they danced is because of the happiness of the hunt or what what was it do you know do you can so uh, if you ask uh, why dance yeah yeah so the most uh, basic of it is to express ecstasy like you are immensely happy immensely sad immensely angry and you want to vent it out at a time when you don't have language so the best way you can do is through an ex um, expression of your body body so when i say body it can be just stamping of a leg mm-hmm. moving of a hand nothing structured mm-hmm. right it's not like dance as we have seen now but any movement that we have can become a dance when it is an expression of this ecstasy and there's also evidence of mimicking nature ah. so this is also one of the starting points of dance so mm. there are uh, research and evidence of how uh, birds mating dances mm. right mm. Uh, or a chimpanzee trying to attack mm. attract the attention of another mm. um in any in animal kingdom we have so mm. many so, yeah. so there is also a man trying to mimic that you know yes. trying to create sound of, by himself so there's no music available mm. he is creating the music with either a clap or slapping his own uh, you know thighs and hands and creating a pattern and trying to move to it mm. so these are all one of the um, could be some of the starting points of mm. dance from the sounds to the expression of the birds itself and then trying to mimic the birds or the monkeys or the chimpanzees the movement in in that and then probably they fell into a rhythmic pattern maybe yeah then we have like um, see when we study folk uh, dances the, there we look at transition of music also mm. so when we look at music so the first is just animal calls right mm. what i'm doing is just mimicking the sounds i'm hearing around me so i'm just grunting or making loud sounds of whatever i'm hearing mm. around me then comes what we call as rhythm pattern so rhythm could be uh, just a clap Hmm. snap so all this can start initiating you into a dance and then we have the instruments coming in right so initially it would be like just tap uh, tapping your own body and creating the sound and it was a time when we didn't have clothes on right so yeah see we, when we study all this it becomes so crucial we start understanding human history it's like a big cultural link yeah. that is uh, holding the past and the present hmm. Hmm. so when we start studying folk arts like this in exclusively looking at why it happened how it happened what inspired it and there are uh, so many things like whether it was <coughs> whether it's a lunar uh, influence solar influence stuff like that whether it's a matriarchy patriarchy that was leading the whole concept hmm. we start looking at understanding the civilization Civil. itself right, right? right yeah. so that is very very interesting that got me more glued into it so it was no longer about let me learn this step and do it for a performance yeah i started looking at it uh, more like a very <clears throat> i'm also a psychology student hmm. the psychology and anthropological impact of what i was uh, reading you know hmm. began to have a big influence on me hmm. uh that way you start understanding that next came instruments hmm. so the instrument would be first was skin instruments and then came melody instruments like a flute hmm. lute they used to call it the, a, the wind instruments wind instruments and then the progression started hmm. so till all these came the concept of rhythm itself was not there hmm. so there's a beautiful uh, quote saying that rhythm itself is for man it's only man who has hmm a rhythm that is a set set pattern pet set pattern of yeah uh, music right yeah, yeah. because animals birds and uh, chimpanzee they all dance hmm. but they don't have a fixed rhythm pattern right. so the only one using a fixed rhythm pattern is humans, humans. right yeah. yeah so uh in terms of <coughs> equidistant spaces in between beats or you know yeah so that that becomes the pa- rhythm right true A- animals don't do it that way animals just just do it because they want to solve a purpose yeah but i don't know uh, humans just did it just for the sake of it maybe rhythm yeah in it later progressed see yeah. as we progressed there is a higher uh, mental capa- capacities that we started uh, mm. developing right mm. so once we started getting that see when language could have been a simple thing no 
it gets more complicated it uh, we started adding so much grammar to it and so much rules of do's and don'ts right right so how so now when i say language you can imagine how wa- vast it is yeah how complex it has got for humans right, right, right. it is no longer about let like, i need water hmm. which would have been the purpose to ask yeah for a language right, right. Th- it doesn't end there right now language means what is the you know dialect alphabet origin yeah. grammar there is so much that has gone into it Correct. in the same way dance also went through this mm-hmm. whole idea and mm-hmm. then when it went in the melody aspect of it then came music and music by itself became such a huge uh, chapter yeah. yeah 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 okay so now coming only to the dance aspect of it um like you said india itself is a very uh, vast variety kind of a place where i mean if you take the whole of india it's like a huge um, you know what do you call encyclopedia or huge ocean or multi oceans of these kind of uh, folk traditions that are there in different parts of uh, the to our country uh, now let's maybe highlight a little bit of india first and then let's come to specifically karnataka sure. like how many kinds of folk dances are there in india and you know generally touch upon sure. uh, and then we can you know come back to karnataka so yeah, yeah. Uh, so when you say talk about uh, folk dance in india it starts getting very beautifully layered so why i say layered is so if you were traveling abroad you visit a, let's say you go to a small native village abroad and ask them show us a folk dance so so usually it will be like one or two and it is more like how i'm telling much later it will be like 16th century 17th century where it's traceable and there would be some document of that dance having originated and they'll have one or two variation to it in fact when we go um, and try to find the definition of the word folk also it is very simple it, they just say anything that is vernacular and not done for the purpose of uh, uh earning money right as recreational then it's folk hmm. such a easy definition but if you come to india and if you were to ask what is folk dance just the definition for me will be like half a page <laughs> that is the depth of layering we get here hmm. so as soon as we say uh, region then it comes into gods caste hmm. sub caste in that then we get into culture <clears throat> house um art craft texture so when i say folk dance all this are coming into it yeah all these dimensions <clears throat> all these dimensions are coming into it mm. so it is a big belief system mm. right so we have a basic um, framework mm. that seems to be evident in all parts of our country and what is that framework of there can i can say there's an um, when i say there are elements of this belief mm. textile gods caste all the things i mentioned mm. these frameworks are there in all the art forms ah, okay. right okay. so we have a framework so i can see a big difference from a uh, uh, maypole dance that i see in uh, european countries to here uh, it stands out mm. but it, within my country if i travel from one state to another it is so different mm. it looks like they are from different universe also at the same time right so there are so many things that overlap and some that stand totally mm-hmm. distinct mm-hmm. so which is such a beautiful thing to observe in india yes. can can we take an example and then sure maybe like uh, uh, folk forms like uh, let me talk about karnataka's like when i say patada kunita mm-hmm. so patada kunita is done by men with huge poles that they hold in a um, pouch mm-hmm. to, to their body keep it inside that and dance mm-hmm. so this kind of dance where over a uh, 15 feet 18 feet poles are held and danced mm. i don't find anywhere else not india in the world they mm. hold poles mm. but not in this way where they're hung on the body in a pouch mm. right so the concept of why it is done how it is done maybe similarities i'll find elsewhere yeah but patad kunita is exclusive can't be found anywhere else in in the world mm. but very unique to karnataka so i i have seen this um, in maharashtra during ganpati hmm they have this traditional dol tasha correct right in that i have seen yeah uh, this kind of pole that they yeah. carry a flag correct and then they hold that with a pouch correct so i'm 
I mean, we were all part of the Deccan before. We were not really true. Karnataka and all that. So maybe that is carried forward. Very there. true. Very true. Right? So that is what I said. There are overlapping. Mm. For example, Kolata. Mm. See, the, no one can claim uh, exclusivity on Kolata. Mm. It has been there in Kerala, here, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Karnataka, and many other parts also in different different names. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the concept and overlay. is similar right. but then there is something it will set out set us different from like karnataka's kolata and the way like andhra kolata do there are lot of differences, differences. like actually in karnataka it is supposed to be done exclusively by men hmm. and that too in the field it's a very rugged very huge uh, uh, the way they dance like sand is supposed to hmm. come up you know hmm. that hard they dance hmm. but what we have seen is the very subtle a soft dainty yeah, kind of that, uh, yeah. dance right yeah. so those differences are there so it's something like this uh, there's also this um, garudi gombe if you know what it is like in processions and all you'll have this huge mask mm. dumma yeah, dummi yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know uh, yeah it's like huge really mask huge right mask, and yes. they'll walk on uh, these uh, wooden uh, mm. legs yeah. and walk around so mm. that is that form is called as garudi gombe mm. so that this form is then all over india mm. right so so that is that some walking on sticks Yes, wooden legs. Mm. Th- that is seen all over India. Different, different names, mm. but it is there everywhere, mm. right? But then there are some forms that are extremely unique, can't be found anywhere else. Even something like Jokti Ratta, that is all found only here. Uh, you know, uh, that uh, that's what I'm telling. That beautiful way of being joint yet disconnected, I find very. mesmerizing to study like any time i travel and visit a new place i feel so many similarities but so many distinctions you right, know right. that way it is uh, amazing in terms of asking how many forms we have hmm. right uh, very cl- uh, conveniently classical we had a government body that decided 1 2 3 4 5 6 is your classical dance hmm. right so we had a government body that did it for us uh, so we have a accountable number of classical dances for folk the count is not at all we are not able to get the count impossible person every state for example my own state karnataka uh, documented folk arts that is uh, music dance theater puppetry all these four together performing arts together crosses 190 wow 190 190 and still being continued or no m- few are on the decline okay and this uh, even uh, with the like i'm telling with um, Uh, evidence Evidences, right okay. that um, after jharkhand and uttarakhand split before they used to have an upper hand we are the highest in the country wow right so that is okay. uh, something that not many people know and if if as a kannada guy you would know that i would full i would feel so proud, proud about it, it right yeah, yeah. that uh, highest number of folk forms mm. is here but if you go to any northern northern india and say tell me a folk dance from karnataka not know. even an w- one name yeah, yeah. one name like even see punjabi bangda yeah. everybody will be able to say correct yeah it's become so popular yes why not a form from karnataka we are yet to get that awareness yes so i felt this need for research also for that only mm. just to create awareness so people come to know mm. more about the beauty of our and even forms. punjabi bangda was popularized by bollywood yeah the hindi film industry popularized it and that too it's a very diluted version that they have popularized true the actual bangra if you see it's, true. it's so <laughs> vigorous and uh, you know so, so acrobatic true i, I mean s- some normal people actually cannot do it unless you are trained for it actually it is not even about acrobatic mm. see there is a nativity that we need to preserve mm. see why we need awareness about folk dances is just to know your identity right right so yeah. what is happening whatever is the popular media we have so many reality shows so everybody does a folk dance mm-hmm. so what they are showing in this tv or in the popular movies as folk is f- a far reach from the truth <laughs> right so just at least to get that awareness of what is authentic what is native because that is what defines me yeah. if i'm coming from this region just to create that uh, idea of what it is that defines our state what is native you need to expand and know about it in its true self right right so you mentioned jharkhand and um, uttarakhand uttarakhand where the places where there were because they were together at that time they were the places where which had highest number of these 
form. the reason for it is also because they had lot of um, the tribal population is very high Tribals. to this day okay to this day they yeah, have the i wanted to come to that to ask the reason why karnataka has you know so many traditional forms and why why don't the others have is it because of the natural habitat here or what is it is it is as as are people here more uh, sort of enthusiastic or what is the reason um i mean what could be the reason maybe what could be the yeah, yeah. it's always <laughs> the one of the reasons is that yes we are um, we have a very rich natural resource yeah. that you know we have western ghats we have um, plains we have plateaus we have mountain ranges we have the sea so we have a very wide range whereas some states will have like either you have desert area or a mountainous area yeah. right we here we have a very very beautiful blend of all kinds of uh, you know natural habitats here that is one reason and the other reason it um the i think it has been protected see many might have existed long long ago but there has been an onslaught of invasions and uh, you know other uh, people coming in ruling over us maybe the others have been exposed to it more mm. so here what was happening the um, uh, karnataka and southern belt whatever were, were only influencing each other so mm. it was becoming cross border um, influence mm. rather than eradication mm. that could be one of the reasons, reasons yeah right. okay yeah and of course tamil nadu and even kerala must be having their own folk traditions they but do every every, every state, every state yeah. i mean like i said like i keep going back to that we were never these states before it was all sort of you know we True. don't know where what mixes where and it used to happen like that yes. right um so specifically coming to karnataka even in karnataka itself there are regions right there yeah. is north there is coastal and there is uh, the bangalore and the the other side which is yeah. mo- mostly plain so can you just you know sort of highlight those kind of regions yeah i mean i, I i'm sure they are called something uttar yeah. uttar karnataka and uh, coastal yeah. Ka- what are they see it is not a political uh, yeah map uh, map but for uh, in terms of studying culture right. to understand culture right. we divide it into four yeah. so one we have is the dakshina kannada belt which mm. is our coastal karnataka coastal. anything that comes on the edge of our uh, sea and ocean that yeah. becomes our uh, dakshina karnataka so all the dance forms music forms theater forms from this will have a certain characteristic yeah. Yeah. okay after that comes the malinadu region mm. the next trip, that is the full western ghat mm. so this whole western ghat is you know very thick mm. and uh, we have so many practices that happen exclusively here mm. and all these folk forms again are connected with one particular you know uh, way in which we are able to identify okay they come from this region mm. right and then we have uttar karnataka mm. uttar karnataka is more of the um, like we don't they don't have much of rainfall so it's a dry area mm. and then we have the bile sea mm. bile sea is the plateau area. plateau area so these uttar karnataka is now being called as kalyana karnataka okay so these are the four demark bile sea uh, kalyana karnataka malinadu and dakshina karnataka dakshina karnataka yeah now the the popular movie kantara which became a very popular among i mean the entire india actually True. saw it right and india and the world so that is a folk tradition right yeah. the the kantara the uh, i forgot what what, what. bhutakola bhutakola right? the bhutakola itself <coughs> is a folk dance yes right yeah uh, invoking the gods uh, within oneself and then you know uh, becoming like a oracle of the god uh, to to proclaim what what is the future or what what needs to be done kind of a thing i'm sure there are many other forms like this yeah. so this is this is related to the malinadu region i think correct. right correct so so this i was talking about traditional ritualistic and tribal yeah, right yeah. so this falls purely into ritualistic ritualistic so in karnataka all the forms folk dances most of them hmm. almost i can say 90 95% are ritualistic in nature okay they're connected with a god cast or community okay so there's a reason why we have to do it so mm. it's not only for entertainment it's right. not like yeah please come i'll sell you tickets please sit and watch mm. so it's happening for a purpose why i'm doing with where when mm. whether it is pre monsoon post monsoon should i do it in amavasya purnima honnima yeah all these are dictating the terms right 